Welcome back. Continuing with the tools on the Freeform tab, we now get to the Paint Deform brushes. And here we are in 3D Studio Max with our model that we'll be working with. And the Paint Deform brushes are these bad boys here. Now, a little bit about our model. I'll turn on edge faces so you can see what's happening here. And we're going to be working on the speaker base. And you can see that it's a really dense mesh. And that's because I've gone ahead and applied a Turbo Smooth modifier and set the subdivision levels to 3. Now, depending on your system specs, I wouldn't recommend you going above 3 or even going to 3 depending on, on the kind of hardware that you're working with because then you might get a bit of chugging in your viewport. So for all sakes and purposes, this is our high detail or high definition mesh. And what I'm going to do is use the paint deform brushes to show you how you can quickly go in and get deformation or damage on this model that you probably use to bake off to your low poly object. And in a previous clip, I demonstrated how the conform brushes could be used in a very, very basic way to deform or damage your mesh. Well, the paint deform brushes are made specifically for deformation in 3D Studio Max. Again, this is by no means a replacement for Mudbox or ZBrush, but they do offer you a quick way to get interactive deformation going within Max. That being said, let's just go ahead and dive right in. And the first thing I want to touch on is there's the button here. And of course, we're on the Freeform tab. And there's a button here that you can go to Load All Brush Settings. And if you click on that, it'll bring a dialog up, but I won't, I won't press on that. There's a button to Save All Brush Settings. And there's also a button to Set Current Settings at, as Default. And you'd use this if you made changes and wanted that to be your, your default settings. If you're going to use any of these, I'd suggest you go in and just make a copy of the default setting or rename it. And that way, you're not overriding the default settings of the tool. That's just a, a, a smart thing to do. Now, the first brushes we'll look at are the shift brushes. And so you've got shift, you've got shift rotate, and you've got shift scale. And similarly to some of the tools we've touched on before, all these brushes, or most of them, have key combinations that you can press that will modify the way the brush behaves. And just mousing over the icon will give you a little drop down that tell you what the key combos are. I don't use every single one, but I will touch on some of the ones that I do use. So with the shift brush, if you have that enabled, and then you mouse over your, your object, and I'm using my left mouse button to move, you can see that I'm shifting the verts in whatever direction I move. With the shift rotate brush, Similarly, I'm rotating the verts in whatever direction I move with the, sh with the shift rotate brush selected. And I'll undo that. With the shift scale brush, I'm scaling the verts or faces in whatever, whatever direction I'm, I'm moving my mouse in. And again, this is all with the left mouse button and no additional key combination. Now, with the shift brush, if I hold control, you can see that now... I'm adjusting my fall off radius here. And that's how the brush would behave with, with those settings. You'll also get the settings here that you can, you can adjust manually. But I use the, the key combo there. Another thing you can do is you can turn on mirroring here. So if I click mirror, then I click on shift options. You can see I can choose the axis that I want to mirror on. And I, can have, I have a bunch of other settings I can do. I also have a percentage value that I can set. And so with mirror on, now you can see that whatever I do is mirrored across the model. And that's pretty nifty to have. I'll just go ahead and undo all those changes. Now if I hold control and drag vertically, I'm changing the fall off. If I hold shift and drag vertically, I'm changing the brush strength. And if I hold shift alt and drag, oops, I'm changing the strength percentage. And so those are all nifty to know. And again, you can adjust those values on the little fly out here. So I'll just go ahead and leave my, my mirror settings on for now. And I'll hop from the shift brushes to the push pull brush. And so the push pull brush, I'll just select it here and I'll just go ahead and mouse over my object just so you can see what happens. And you can see that it's just pulling all these verts and faces out. And I'll quickly undo that. Now if I hold control and shift, I can resize the brush. Now I have a smaller brush there. If I hold Shift and Alt for the push-pull brush, 
I can change the brush strength. So now I'm dropping the strength value down to about 0.5. And again, you can adjust these values here. And so with my, my strength value down, I'll just go ahead and you can see now things are a bit more subtle. And I'll just go ahead and undo all those again because I'm not wanting to commit any of those changes. Now, if we're wanting to do some quick damage on our high detail mesh here, I'll just go ahead, let's right click and I'll do hide unselected because I'm only wanting to work with the speaker base. And so I just go in and I just grab my push pull brush and I'll just make sure the options are where I want them. And then what I'll do here is I'll just go in and I'll start moving my mouse around just to kind of deform my mesh. If I hold Alt, I'll push. If I have no key pressed, I'll pull. And so I'll just decrease my strength value to about 0.25. And I'll just go in and I'll make my brush size smaller as well. And now I'll just go in and start just banging up these edges here. Say, for example, something happened to the handle here. I'll just go in. And in between using no key press, as well as pressing Alt, I'm pushing or pulling these faces or verts, and just to modify the mesh here. And I could just jump around the object. And as you can see, I'm getting basic damage, basic deformation, all within 3D Studio Max. Now, if I have all these these damaged areas and I'm not too happy with them or I think they're too aggressive and I want to tone them down a bit. Now I can hold shift and just mouse over and I'm just working my left mouse button over and that'll go in and relax the mesh or in effect soften all the damage that I've done. So I'm just going in with shift and I'm quickly just working over the areas, working over the dented handle here. and I'm just relaxing, softening everything out. And I'll just do that a little bit more in some of the areas that I, that I, distorted and again it's just left mouse button holding shift with the push pull brush and I'm relaxing everything now if for example if for some reason I have a, a deformation that I don't want to keep I can just hold control with the sh with the push pull brush and if I mouse over that will go through and revert my mesh to its original state and that's just holding the left mouse button and just working over the areas that I had originally deformed and you can see that it's reverting the mesh basically, bringing things back to their original state. And I'll just zoom out a little bit. I'll go over here, revert that if I didn't want the changes there. And I'll do something similar to the handle area here as well. We also have a relax or soften brush. And that behaves similarly. You can just go in, go over the areas, and it'll relax and soften out all the changes you've made. We've got a flatten brush as well. And again, that's just going to flatten whatever edits you've been making. And just to demonstrate this a little better, let me go back to my push-pull brush. I'll just make something really, really aggressive here. I'll just grab my flatten brush, go back. Now you can see that it's flattening everything out. And of course, I can hold control. And I'll still revert my mesh depending on how much flattening I wanted. And so that's, that's pretty nifty. There's a noise brush that you can go in and that'll just add noise to your model here. And I'm just working my left mouse button, left mouse button pressed and I'm just working around the model and you can see that it's adding noise. And this would also be pretty, pretty nifty for sculpting terrain or working on organic objects. And of course this is not super realistic, but I'm just going through and showing you that with the noise brush, I can quickly go in and I'm adding noise to the surface here. Now we have the exaggerate brush and with that what I can do is, and I'll increase my brush size for that, I'll just make it to about six. With that what I can do is now when I go over areas that I've done any kind of deformation to, and I'll zoom in, it goes through and it pronounces the effects there. And realistically I'll never, I'd never have something that looks like this, but I'm just going to the extremes to kind of show you how the brush would work here. And I'll just go ahead and hold control and just mouse back over with the brush to revert all my changes there. Or if you wanted to get back quicker, you could just hit undo. Another brush we have is the pinch spread brush. And so with that brush, you can go in and it's going to let you pinch your object. And I'll just go ahead and turn on wireframe here so you can see what's happening. 
and now you can see that it's pushing everything closer giving you like a pinched area with that brush and I'll turn off the wireframes now so you can see what we did there and again it's just a matter of going in playing with these brushes and getting basic deformation or just playing around with your mesh all within 3d studio max to get something that you like and I'll just go through and hold shift and relax some of these areas here another nifty little thing you can do and this does not work with the shift brushes by the way but another nifty little thing you can do is say for example let me just hop back to this tool here that we used earlier the spline tool and before I do that I'll switch from grid to draw on surface and I'll go to pick and I'll pick my model now we're working on the speaker base so let's say we wanted it we wanted to have deformation on this mesh in a certain shape I could go to the spline tool now and I'll draw a spline on my model here and what I'm gonna do now is I'll go back to one of my push-pull brushes and again this does not work with the shift brushes only the pull push-pull brushes and I'll go back to my push-pull brushes here and what I'll do is I'll go to pick to pick a spline and I'll just pick the spline that we just drew on the object here and I'll make sure this button is depressed and that's gonna constrain my deformation to a spline or shape and now with my push pull brush if I just mouse across the object my deformation is limited to that spline and again this is neat for adding deformation in a specific shape to an object or if you were working on a piece of terrain or something like that you could use this to kind of deform a certain path for like a road or something like that and I'll just isolate so we can see just the object itself. And there you have it. And so that's just a, a few ways that you can use these brush and just get kind of clever and creative within 3D Studio Max. Alrighty, that completes this clip. I look forward to seeing you in the next.